Mort is one of the most resourceful of artists, and he's also very consistent. While the representational mode carries forward in a comparable manner from painting to painting, each painting is individually adapted to the type of light, the type of atmosphere, the foliage, the architecture, uh, the circumstances of, of, of pose or attitude or mood or emotion. Each painting elicits a response that's distinctive to the subject of that painting. And, and Mort has an enormous arsenal of uh, pictorial uh, vocabulary based on more than 50 years of experience as an illustrator. I showed talent at a very early age, about three, and my parents recognized it and encouraged me. After studying illustration, I went into the illustration field at that time in the uh, early to mid-50s, and um, it took a, a few years, but I seemed to click and had the uh, ability to uh, make a living at it. Of course, I painted anything that anyone would give me. I did diagrams, uh, whatever it was. I just, my sole ambition at that stage was to just make a living painting pictures. Finally, I got my first uh, freelance jobs. Um, as time went on, I got the kind of assignments I was better suited for, but I really paid my dues with about 10 or 15 years of working very, very hard um, to learn my craft, so to speak. Coming from being an illustrator and admiring the great American illustrators, amongst them Norman Rockwell, J.C. Leyendecker, Dean Cornwell, Howard Pyle, I always felt it was fine art long before the rest of the world did. There were many, many, many people that painted as well as Norman Rockwell and as realistically as Norman Rockwell, but the element that helps to tell the story is the composition, the linear composition, the, the light and dark. Uh, there are so many elements an artist can use, perspective, as an example of telling a story. Uh, Rockwell does it impeccably. I try to emulate with a different type of picture. Well, I could predict, generally speaking, that when someone looks at a picture, I know just where they're going to look first, I could tell you just where their eye will travel afterwards, and, and where to go back to, and uh, that's what storytelling is all about. Everything in Mort's paintings conveys a sense of life, it conveys a sense of reality. It's, it has, it's painted with conviction. There's no irony, there's no cynicism. It's straightforward and it conveys the narrative that people, in many cases, have come to know through books, but to see it pictorially, to see it visually, is something that, that, that is otherwise um, really needs to be conjured up in this manner. So as a painter, he does something that, uh, that no one else has done so comprehensively and so successfully. Now, your eye will go immediately to the cowboy on a horse. Why? Because the sky is light and the contrast, the light and dark that I mentioned before, uh, makes your eye go to that. If you make the most contrasting part of your picture where your center of interest is, then that's where the eye will go. Added to that is the linear element of that tree that curves in and acts like a pointer directly to the cowboy. It's not pointing out. It's not going off the top of the picture. It's curving around and aiming your eye right at him. And the whole idea is to try to capture the person's attention from across a room and draw them across that room and look at it and get them involved in looking at that picture. And that's what I'm hoping for with each and every one of the pictures that I do. Probably the most memorable moment that I have ever had in my career was the, the experience of recording the, uh, the building, testing, launch and touchdown of the uh, Space Shuttle Columbia. And of course it takes on such a special historic significance because of the tragedy that followed. So in my opinion, the most important paintings I, I will ever do in my life because it's not too different than what Remington and Russell did in painting the West. They were there at the time. And there I was, one of the very few artists, if not the only one, that witnessed all of what I saw, the, uh, the test firing of the engines, the first rollout of the test craft enterprise, the uh, 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 tile problem that the space shuttle had. Even before the tragedy, it was 
one of the great moments in my life without a question. I, it's impossible to describe when you see something like that. When it came to painting the Civil War, I found that there were many, many areas that had never been touched on. So that although people think of me as a Civil War artist, I've really painted the history of America. But within the genre of the Civil War, I've done very few battle scenes. Very often it's a genre street scene uh, with women and children, and it just happens to take place between 1861 and 1865. Whenever I do a painting, I very often start by doing a diagram, a floor plan, so to speak, of what the event is. And what I'm trying to come up with here is a picture that takes place at a famous old plantation house in Fredericksburg, Virginia called Moss Neck. So I start with little thumbnail sketches like these here and try to think of it from one angle or another or another. After a while, I come to a certain conclusion and decide and very often I'll just check it off and this is the idea that I think is going to work. And I finally, after a, a number of other stages, uh, develop it to the final point where I know exactly what I'm going to do and I've worked it up into a larger shape here. The reason I work on brown paper is because I can now highlight with some white chalk the different things I'm going to put a light on over here. We're going to see a couple with a uh, man helping the woman down from a carriage or a sleigh. The grid that you see here on this scale is then going to be transferred but enlarged to the correct size on the finished canvas. As you can see, I've drawn up the bulk of this picture using the same devices that I use on all pictures. I've more or less centrally located Robert E. Lee, who's going to be here, but I'm going to use the lighting device under the porch to throw a very bright light on him and make a real contrast here. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be called uh, Merry Christmas, generally. These branches of these trees will be extended to point to him almost like an arrow. And so your eye will almost have to go there. Each artist develops his own way of uh, painting and working, and he usually learns from some mentor. All artists that do detailed work in oil have to rest their hand on a stick. It's called a mall stick, and uh, that prevents your hand from smudging. So uh, when I saw that, I said, hey, that's a great idea, and I, I used that. I used the, the gun propped up. I'll use a hat propped up. I make up the characters. It's one of the great fun things that I have is making up these characters as I paint. I sort of climb into them and uh, make believe I'm them and think, what are they thinking? And Well, he could be talking to someone next to him and then you, you think, well, the next guy should be a tall guy, the next one's... You know, uh, you just try to get variety into it with, with the characters, but the key element is design. I try at all times to reconstruct the scene the way it would have been during the Civil War. What makes Mort's work so different is the fact that he relies on extensive research. Every button on a uniform, the character of a gun, a saddle, all of that is superbly rendered with the accuracy of known uh, resources historically. But I think what sets it apart aesthetically is that Mort's activities as an artist involve reinventing and reimagining events that have long since transpired in history and, were, and events which largely, in many cases, were never photographed. When I paint an historical painting, I'm painting it for an expert. And one of the things I learned is that if the expert can't find fault with it, no one else will. But the interesting part of it is that when it is right, it looks right. When I think of the idea of the difficulty of making a work of art, what comes to mind is someone like Michelangelo. Everyone knows how hard he worked on the Sistine Chapel ceiling. But anyone who gets to know Mork's work uh, would find it hard to imagine that there are enough hours in the day for him to do what he has done with each of these paintings. I mean, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. If, uh, if I were retired, uh, I'd be doing the same thing. So it doesn't get any better than that, does it?